so here we are again reviewing another monitor because I hate myself and I just can't get enough. But have we finally stumbled upon a great OLED monitor? Well, let's find out. Now the monitor that we're going to be taking a look at today has quite a long name. I'm just going to call it the Corsair OLED Flex. Now this is a 45 inch 3440 by 1440. Now wait a minute, wait a minute before you click off. Yes, that's a pretty large display for a 1440p type of resolution. However, I think you guys might be surprised. I think you'll actually really like it. So be sure to stick through the whole review. Now it does have an aspect ratio of 21 by nine. So I find it very immersive, although that could cause some compatibility issues with certain games and applications. Now it is a W OLED panel. So that has its benefits and also compromises. It's also 240 Hertz, which is incredibly fast and it is G-Sync and FreeSync compatible. Now it does come with a stand, but it looks like it actually can't really move up and down. So strange choice there, but yeah, that's what you're getting. And in terms of ports, it has two HDMI 2.1, which is great. One DisplayPort 1.4, one USB Type-C, two USB 3.2 on the back, and then one USB Type-C upstream port. Now on the front, it also has two more USB 3.2 ports, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and then you've got you know your power button and all that sort of stuff in the front too. So I actually do like the stand in the sense of it does give you some really great connectivity. However, in terms of a base amount, apparently there will be a way to vase them mounted. They're gonna include some sort of bracket in the future. However, as of now, can you do it? I don't know. Now, in terms of the price, I'm reviewing this right now because it actually dropped in price significantly. It was originally around $2,000, I believe. Now it's down to $1,500. And the question is, is it worth it at $1,500? Because, you know, this isn't just a ultra wide OLED monitor. It's an OLED flex. So it does have one thing that many other monitors don't have and that's the ability to bend the screen and honestly this is actually a really great feature and something that differentiates it from the other monitors on the market but is it enough to command such a high price well let's talk about it first starting off with the color now i do want to talk to you guys about color uh, in general first when it comes to w oled as it's kind of a mixed bag for me so w oled has a ton of strengths including the perfect per pixel dimming and the insane response times and stuff like that but one of the problems i've run into with w oled has been in terms of color it just doesn't impress me as much at high luminance levels as stuff like mini led or quantum dot oled does so i think Honestly, that white subpixel does cause some washing out at higher brightness levels, or at least that's my theory as of right now. Now, in terms of calibration, the color accuracy was pretty good out of the box. The white point was pretty close to where I'd like to see. However, it wasn't perfect in the EOTF curve tracking definitely needed some improvement. Now, thankfully, I was able to improve that through the use of an ICC profile, as well as some adjustments to the monitor itself. So I do highly, highly recommend if you're thinking about picking up this monitor or you have it, taking a look in my Patreon and getting those settings as this will significantly enhance its color accuracy. As you can see here on the second image here, I was able to basically nearly perfectly match that EOTF curve and even tighten up the RGB balance quite a bit as well. Now, when it comes to HDR, it actually basically doesn't give me any options to adjust it and it's pretty bad out of the box. So this is not a good result and I would like to see Corsair improve upon this with future firmware updates, which I checked at the time of getting this and I could not find any further updates to improve this monitor. Now, in terms of the color volume, Here's where it gets weird. In sRGB, very good. BT709, 147 plus percent, nearly 100% DCI-P3, and 66 plus percent BT2020. So exactly what you'd expect. Looks really good. However, in HDR, things are weird. And this is an issue I've seen on every single W OLED I have tested so far. The color volume is not measuring where it should be. Now, is this a problem with the software? Is this a bug? I don't know, so I'm not gonna tell you if it's bad or not. However, my theory is when talking to other people who calibrate displays, this might be true, it might not, but if it is true, this could be down to the white subpixel causing a washing out or maybe desaturation of colors at high luminance levels, which does not occur in sRGB. Again, 
I cannot confirm if this actually is the case or if it's just an error. So, you know, don't burn me at the stake if, it, if this turns out to not be true. But if it's true, that's my theory. And that's why it might have worse color volume than, say, Quantum.OLED or Mini LED in HDR. But now let's go ahead and move on to the brightness because this is a big deal for OLED monitors. Is it bright enough? In a 100% window, I'm going to say no, 143 nits. I would expect better out of this as I believe it's an MLAW OLED panel. And if that's the case, honestly, they could be pushing this way, way brighter. It could be well into the 200s of nits. And this is where I would expect, regardless of panel tech, where I want OLED to be at this point in time. I think it should be over 200 nits, so a little bit disappointing there. Also in a 10% window, 660 nits is fine, but I would like to see these monitors start getting closer to 1,000 nits like their TV counterparts because it does make a big difference in the overall scene brightness. Speaking of scene brightness, what about a game Battlefield 1? A little bit disappointing, 402 nits. That's really not all that bright and it gets absolutely smoked by stuff like the S95C, which with some tinkering can hit nearly 2000 nits in the same game. So again, I would like to see this get a little bit brighter. So far, not too impressive, but the minimum brightness, absolutely excellent, zero nits because is a W OLED display and they are fantastic at displaying the deepest of blacks, which means you're gonna get an infinite contrast ratio for overall a fairly good HDR presentation despite the lower than expected brightness. Now in terms of latency, also very, very good. I measured 24.3 milliseconds of total system latency, making it one of the fastest displays I have ever measured. Now in terms of the motion performance, it's also excellent. It's basically right there with the PG27 AQDM, which is also a 240 hertz OLED, giving you lightning fast response times in a great looking image in motion. Of course, it slows down at 160 hertz, but there's no real major black level smearing or anything like that that you would see on something like a VA LCD. So really, really good there. Now in terms of text clarity, it's actually not very good. And this is the one unfortunate part about having such a large screen with a somewhat what I would consider to be lower resolution. I do believe it would be much, much better if it was 5120 by 2160 or heck even 3840 by 1600 would have been a massive improvement in terms of text clarity as W OLED already has issues with text clarity inherently because of its extra white subpixel causing some fringing on the edges of text. And this is only exacerbated when the actual amount of pixels is lower than something like 4K. You stretch that out onto a larger screen and it becomes very noticeable. So I'm not sure if this is gonna be a great display for doing work on because of this issue. Now, in terms of the finish, unfortunately, yes, it is using some version of a matte finish. And this, guys, please, what do I gotta do? This should be using a glossy finish. It is a huge mistake to be putting a matte finish on a display like this. I know why they did it, because it can curve so much. I think the fear is it will have too many reflections, but the problem is there really is no way to actually get rid of reflections no matter what finish you use. There's just different ways of dealing with it. I don't think using a matte finish is a good solution because you're not actually getting rid of reflections, you're just diffusing them, and the consequences of that are you're gonna have a worse, less clear looking image with a worse perceivable contrast ratio and a worse perceivable vibrancy as well, leading to worse HDR presentation, which is a big selling point of these displays. So Corsair, if there's anybody there watching this video, please, for the love of God, move to a glossy finish if you do another one of these monitors. Now, in terms of the viewing angles, for a W OLED, I thought they were pretty dang good. I didn't see as many of the weird tinting issues I've seen on W OLEDs in the past, although I'm sure if you looked hard enough for it, you probably could find it, and it might be a panel variance type of thing. And also, uniformity was fairly good overall as well. But there's one thing we really didn't talk about a whole lot, and that was its ability to bend. And I did say, we're gonna talk about it, let's talk about it. So, honestly, I think this is a huge selling point. I think the ability to bend one of these monitors is awesome. I think it allows people to have the level of curvature that they want, and I think by doing it manually rather than having motors inside the monitor, it allows for the build cost and the weight to be much, much lower. So I think this actually is the right way to do it. Now, is it worth paying a bunch more to get this feature? I think that's gonna depend on the person, 
But personally, if I could, for example, take my 55 inch quantum dot OLED TV and bend it with my hands, I would pay a lot more for that. So I, I think it is really worth doing. I think I'd like to see more monitors with this in the future. I think it's a huge selling point. And I think it differentiates it from the other monitors on the market. And for that reason, honestly, this might be, despite its flaws, one of the best OLED monitors on the market. I did talk a lot about a lot of its flaws, but to be fair, to have a monitor that is not only incredibly fast in terms of latency, but also motion performance, and also is incredibly immersive with that 45 inch screen that can curve around you, I think that's really, really awesome. I think 45 inches is a great size for an ultra wide monitor. If you're into immersive gaming, I think that's the perfect size for an ultra wide monitor, truly perfect. Uh, my only complaints are that I think the resolution isn't high enough. I think it should use a glossy finish. And in the future, I'd like to see quantum.oled used instead of WOLED as I believe quantum.oled has superior color, at least in my opinion. So yeah, I do think this is actually one of the best OLED monitors on the market if you're into fast paced gaming or immersive gaming. I said that kind of previously about LG's variant, but I actually think this is better because it's coming in at a similar price and you have the ability to bend it to the curvature that you like without really having to pay any more. So overall, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up, has a lot of room for improvement, but I do think it's really good and I will have an Amazon affiliate link in the description below as well as all my settings if you're interested in checking out this monitor. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra thin, flexible, and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.